Hello my dear students this is me Anish Moses English PT from US Academy and Institute Gorakhpur So let's start this chapter <coughs> the loss of spring Now in this chapter you'll be finding that this chapter is divided into two parts the first part of this chapter name is sometimes i find a rupee in the garbage and the second part is i want to be a driver i want to drive a car sir so now these two parts belong to this chapter now the theme down whether um, either these both topics are different these both stories are from different children from different areas now but the thing is that see the theme is totally same the theme does not differ the theme is totally belongs to this poverty and the child labor in which we'll be finding in the chapter that various other children of different parts in the nation are just having the same criteria in which they don't have that much amount and they are earning for their livelihood and they are in a poverty condition now the narrator of this chapter name is anis jung and she describes she clearly depicts the clear picture of these children and she narrates in her uh, story while telling the uh, the type of scenario in which these people are living now in the first part sometime i find a rupee in the garbage we will find a boy named sahib e alam his story and in this story he is a rag picker this boy is working as a rag picker he is a very small boy in that area of seema puri which is in the outskirts of new delhi he is living over there and he daily collects rags and he just picks rags and he just um, um is he is holding a bag like uh, and uh, he is just collecting all the rags you must have seen from the road side small children uh, gathering the rags and they are just going with a um, bag in their bag <clears throat> now this narrator and his jung she is daily seeing these boys who are just working like that and while she is seeing one day she stops this boy named sahib e alam and she asks ki why he is doing such type of work and is he not interested in going to schools now when she asks this question to sahib e alam sahib e alam replies in a very docile and a very happy and a polite manner that there is no school near to his area where he is living as i have already told you he was living in the outskirts of new delhi delhi in the outer area of new delhi where there are they are not getting more facilities and same is the thing he is telling that he is not getting any of the school nearby that's why he is not going to school if in case he gets a school he will definitely go in the same way this narrator ask sahib e alam that okay when i will start a school in your area will you come in that school in that case sahib e alam tells ki yes definitely when a school is started in his area he will definitely come so that was the thing which was told by anis jung to the sahib e alam and after that it has been told by uh, anis jung that she is seeing him seeing his poverty and after some days she meets him again and now he this boy is uh um, coming along with his lot of friends two three boys small boys more were there with him and now they are wearing a torn shoes and some of them were bare feet so now after few days again this anis jung meets with this boy sahib e alam and now sahib e alam asked him ask her sorry that is your school ready can we come to your school now in that case anis jung becomes a bit humiliated she thinks that ki um, she have done a wrong thing by telling this uh, by asking this sahib e alam for this school because it was just a genuine question which she asked with uh, sahib e alam and there were no any schools which she was making <clears throat> now in that case she was a bit humiliated and herself she was thinking about these poor children and now when she saw their feet she asked them ki why you people are why you uh, children are not wearing that slippers or any of the shoes in that case some of the boys said that ki it's a habit it's a <clears throat> it's a nature in which they are not wearing it's a type of a ritual in which they don't wear shoes some of them were saying that ki nahi they don't have any shoes or if they have they will wear in any of the festival time so such type of various other excuses these boys gave but no one told the correct thing that they were really very poor and that's why they are not wearing 
the thing was known clearly known by the Nis Jung that because these boys are very poor, that's why they are not wearing their shoes. She, uh, Anis Jung now remember her past when she came to know about a boy. It was in her past when she knew one boy who was very uh, rich at that time and because he also never had shoes, he prayed to God for a shoes and uh, on the next day itself he got a new pair of shoes. <clears throat> but these children like Sahib Alam, they are very small and they are very poor and they will never get shoes, he, she herself knew. She also knew that instead her, uh, his name was Sahib Alam, that means that Lord of Universe, but he can never be uh, a king of any area because he is living in such a slum area. As I have already told you that these slum people, now when she comes to know about these slum people, that they are living in Seema Puri. Now, these Seema Puri people are moreover poor and these Seema Puri people have migrated from Dhaka, Bangladesh. <clears throat> and now they are, because over there when they were living, they used to cultivate, they used to do farming, but unfortunately due to heavy rain or by flood, their whole crops were destroyed. And once their crops were destroyed, they migrated to India in New Delhi, Seema Puri, so that they can get some job over here and they can earn something for their livelihood. Now due to that reason they migrated to Seema Puri and once they are in here Seema Puri they are living as uh, they are living in a very small huts they, are, they have covered their homes with tarpaulin and such type of uh, old type of um, homes they are making which seems that they are very very poor. Now when they are living in such type of home now she is uh, and is young is now thinking that she that they must be because they are very poor they are not getting that much food for themselves and that's why these boys are not going to school that's why they have not got any type of education she also comes to know about these boys that because they have migrated to Simapur they have got one ration card due to that only these ration cards have got two purposes with them first is to give vote and the second is to get ration or such type of food grains that was the two purpose of which they have got this um, ration card and only two purpose is being fulfilled by this type of ration card so these all things Anis Jung is describing in this part of thing and but one thing more she is telling that for the for these people who are living in Seema Puri just for example these father of Sahib Alam and the people who are living who are elder they for them this garbage means that a means of survival because by selling garbage only they can get some amount in which they can uh, earn their livelihood by selling some of the garbage by getting some of things from garbage they can sell it they will be getting and after selling it they will get some of the amount and after getting some of the amount they can buy food grains but for these small boys who are doing rack picking for them it is a wonder for example, if they are searching in a garbage and if they are getting 10 rupees or any of the costly items, they will be very happy with it and it will be considered as a wonder for them because a small boy has searched. So this was the case which was being described by Annie Jung. After few years, now again Annie Jung meet this boy Sahib Alam. Now, as it was told earlier, the name, the meaning of the name Sahib Alam was Lord of Universe. <coughs> Sorry. But now at this time, this Sahib Alam is no more his own master now, but he is working in a tea shop, in a tea stall. And he is working in a tea stall, and because he is working in a tea stall, he is getting 800 rupees per month, and he is also getting his food over there. And at this time, he is no more holding any of the rag in his shoulder, but he is uh, picking up a canister who which is filled with oil and he is working over there and now Sahib Alam is living over there and he thinks and now Sahib Alam thinks that whatever thing he wanted to be he have become and he don't have any other dreams in his eyes and only this was the thing for which he was made and like this like this only he will do his or um, he will work the whole entire life. So this was the part first in which a boy's story, Sahib Alam's story was described in which he was living in a great poverty, picking up the rags, he was picking up the garbages 
to as so as to earn his livelihood so it was the part first now coming on to the part second i want to drive a car in this it it will be clearly shown it is clearly telling about a story about a boy who uh, whose name is mukesh and he young goes to the house of mukesh and she finds which is in firozaba now while he is going while she goes to that boy uh, house na um, named mukesh in firozabad she finds that these all people who are working in a glass bangle factory in a bangle factory because you must be knowing that firozabad is famous for the glass bangles and mostly entirely uh, these poor families and these uh, families which are living in a very slum area these all family are making glass they are making bangles and while they are making bangles they are just selling it and by selling it they are getting some of the amount for their livelihood now the thing is ki because they are getting some of the amount as their livelihood they don't want to overcome it or they don't want to change their family business what this generation is been doing they want to continue with that for example grandfather done did, did the same job father is doing the same job now the children are doing the same job that is making a uh, glass bangle industry now because these people are making glass bangle now these uh, have no other job only they are doing this type of hereditary job now mukesh grandmother meets with anis jang anis jang come to their home for an interview now mukesh uh, mukesh grandmother tells her that it's our family job and we will continue doing this only and because we don't have any other opportunity to work we'll be doing the same job because this job gives them satisfaction this job gives them uh, um, how with uh, gives them some of the amount which they can earn and also they get so uh, they get some recognition that yes they are working in slum and they are getting some of the amount now moving ahead when she uh, anis jang also sees savita over there who is a very small girl working working in that glass bangle industry she becomes very much um um a desperate knowing that ki such a small girl is working in that heated furnace in which a uh, lots and lots of light is emitted and due to that light and gases savita's eyes can also get damaged or due to that pollution many of the things many of the lung failure or many of the disease can also occur to such a small girl she also comes to know anis jang also comes to know that who is working in this glass furnace in this glass industry mostly workers or employees i gets destroyed because of this gas now it is told about this small girl savita that savita being a very small girl she is from since childhood she is working in that glass glass furnace and in that furnace she will be destroying even her lungs her eyes but then also she is making bangles and she herself don't know ki what is the meaning of that bangles and what these bangles symbolize in her life when she will grow up when she will get married because it symbolize her own suhag which she will be coming to know when she becomes uh, elder and at that time she also um, anis jang also tells about that these people because they have made a home over there in that slum area they they it seems that they have made they have done a very huge thing in this entire life that was very difficult so that was the thinking of these small uh, these people who were living in that slum making this glass bangles and also grandmother thinks that it is the god's destiny that they are living in that area they are were given such type of work that the whole entire um, family is doing also any jung ask them ki have they not tried to work uh, have they not tried to work something else neither they have either they have just um, tried to work some different try to improve their business so in that case or she uh, anis jang also asked them ki have, uh, whether they have not tried to make a group in which they can just form a group they can just take their business in a next level a higher level in that case grandmother also thinks in because it's the destiny of god that they have to live its their own karma in which they have to live in such poverty and then they have to do their work so that's what the grandmother is also saying and she also tells ki because um if they try to uh, improve their business police and various other politicians they don't or the aristocratic people they don't allow them to do whether either 
if they start to work they just uh, cash hold them and they stop them in doing their um, any improved work so that is what thinking grandmother is also saying but in case when any young is asking mukesh that what he wants to be in his life at that time mukesh tells clearly that he wants to be a motor mechanic and he wants to um, work as a motor mechanic in any of the firm he don't want to become a pilot but he wants to become a motor mechanic after listening this any young also realized because these people are living in such a slum they don't have a dream desire to become a pilot then to only become a motor mechanic so that was the thing that any young realizing uh, realizes after meeting these two type of people sahib e alam and mukesh that is what the thing which comes in the mind of uh, any young that the, uh, the people are living in a stricken poverty and they don't even after even getting um, means opportunity also they are not able to uh, collect these type of opportunities to better uh, to specify their themselves now also it is said in this chapter it is very important question that is uh, asked in the board examination that at times it has been asked in the exams that what because sahib e alam and mukesh both of them were living in the slum area both of them were poor but what what the critical difference what was the main difference in which you will keep sahib e alam and mukesh as yes it is correct that both were living in the poverty the correct answer would be sahib e alam never wanted to see himself in any other post he as he started as i have told you that he started to work as a um, uh, work in a tea stall he never wanted to grow up he wanted to stay at that position only because he think but in the position of mukesh mukesh his family was a glass bangle making family in firozabad but he always wanted to grow and once when any young ask him that he what he wants to be in the future he clearly tells that he wants to be a motor mechanic so that is the most important question that will come across in the board exams and this type of question is always asked also it has been asked about the furnace in which these people are working in the glass bangle furnace means in the glass bangle industry what type of um, critical problems physically they are facing while they are working their eyes get damaged their lungs get damaged uh, they it's a child labor in which a small girl like sapita is working so this type of questions are also being so over here it was the theme of this chapter the loss spring uh now here will be following questions which you have to do in your question book in your answer book now here comes the first question from the book what could be some of the reasons for the migration of people from villages to cities what were the reasons for which these people from bangladesh from dhaka migrated to seema puri village so you have to reply what was the reason what was the main reason in which these people migrated now coming to the second question would you agree that promises made to poor children are rarely kept why do you think this happens in the incidences narrated in the test now over here you have to tell that were the promise which narrated it as well as various people do to children like for example various other uh, elite class people do various promises to the poor children do you think that these type of promises are kept you have to link the chapter also in which you have studied that was any promise done to this sahib e alam was it fulfilled you have to link that thing also also question number 3 what forces conspire to keep the workers in the bangal industry of firozabad and poverty means what all forces do conspire why these people are conspire to live in that such slum area itself why they can't rise to any of the higher level why they can't form any of the groups in which they could improve their business this type of answer means this type of thing also you have to write in your copy next question talking about the text first how in your opinion can mukesh realize his dream now what dreams first you have to tell that what dreams he have and uh, also you have to tell that 
why did he said to have, uh, be like a motor mechanic why he wanted to become only a motor mechanic why did he never thinks to become a pilot that's what you have to also tell in this answer next question mention the hazards of working in the glass bangle industry so i have told you while teaching that what were the hazards what were the outcomes what were the demerits in working in this glass industry and also you have to tell what all problem these people used to face last question why should child labor be eliminated and how so you have to tell why the child labor is to be eliminated and what all rules what all regulation government is making and why, how being a student you can eliminate this type of child labor so these all question answers you have to do in your copy and before doing these question answers first thing is you have to write the chapter name the narrator name and you have to find at least 10 difficult word meanings from the chapter and then you have to write the summary at least 120 words you have to write the summary and after then only you have to complete these six questions which are given in your textbook at the present moment you can just pause this video and you can just write these all question answers also the chapter the full chapter i have given in my description box you can click to the link and the previous chapters previous um, ignition class link is also given in my description you can just click on to it and you can view all these videos also it has been advised to the students that if there is any problem in any of the question or if anything is not understood they can just comment on my video and i'll definitely reply to it now stay safe stay at your home all the best